So furniture is a good way to sort of test um, or utilize the different modeling functions in Rhino, uh, very various processes to make curves and surfaces. Um, you start to look at furniture and you start to think and understand which um, <coughs> functions will be used to this. Something like this wiggle side chair, uh, the, the Gary, should be pretty obvious that this is a simple extrusion. I'm going to um, I save the image of this on my desktop <coughs> and I'm going to go into Rhino quickly and use the picture frame function. I'll bring that up. I'm not really concerned with scale right now. Uh, I can always scale it later. I'm wor worried about proportions. So I'm going to rotate 3D and pick the axis, which is, I want to rotate about that axis. From there is a reference up. So I could have made the picture frame in the front view, but I, again, like to promote operating in perspective, so it may seem a little strange, but uh, it's, it's a good process to get used to. So I'm going to change the construction plane to this object. The grid is now on there, so if I were to draw something, rectangle, then it's on that plane. So what I'm going to do is put this on a layer called image, right click, change objects layer, and lock that. So now I can't select it, which is good. And what I want to do is <coughs> use the, not the, not the um, control point curve, but the curve through interpolate points. Interpolate points. I'm going to pick one side to stay on, and I'm going to click and just start maybe loosely tracing this. You, you know, however many points you'd like, you'll see that it starts to conform. So I'm not going to get too crazy here in terms of accuracy. And again, this isn't an exact elevation, but it'll work for the purposes of this. So I'm just going through and uh, tracing the points. I could be much more thorough with this if I needed to be, but again. <clears throat> Let's see what we have. So almost done, I think. Yeah. So anywhere there's kind of a big change in curvature, I think that's where you want to... Uh, and then from this point on it gets it goes straight so I'm, I could do that with the straight curve but again for now I'm not gonna concern too much with that so there's the curve it's essentially the outline of that and I'm going to use the offset command set command and the distance I'm gonna click there and it wants me to measure a distance so what I'm gonna do is click here and however far that is that's the distance I want uh, so it looks like it's going to be, you know, I didn't use the offset, I used the, or I used the offset command, but I sort of measured that way, so you could be a little bit more specific, and if you knew um, the exact distance, obviously you could type that in, but it looks like this is going to be pretty close. So I'm going to say OK. Um, I'm, going to be, I'm sorry, I'm going to do the offset command again, right click, and in here, <coughs> corner, sharp, this is whether it's, I'm going to make sure that it's a sharp corner, and this cap is an important thing. So if I were to just click on this side, it's going to just create another curve. If I were to select this and say cap flat, it's going to offset it and close that end. So there's, that is what we want. That's very close to the actual thing you see here. I was sort of broke the curve a little bit, but I could have been more precise about that. I hit F10, and actually in this case, I'm going to explode this explode this object, so I'm going to take this off and draw a line, a polyline. I don't have my quick keys set up, so I'm doing everything command-based, and I'm going to just click to the end here, and I'm going to use the extend 
curve extend and I'm going to say this boundary right click and say this curve and then I'm going to use the trim command in fact I'll use the fillet command uh, radius of zero because I want it to be a sharp corner and join yes so I'm going to trim this with this you see that they're attached now and I'm actually going to just hit control A and join so now it's all one curve and I'm going to use the extrude command I actually just exploded it um, extrude curve that curve and that's that chair so <clears throat> again this is a pretty straightforward process and I didn't cap it so when I extrude curve um, solid yes and then it will have its end cap and I didn't really know how long this is I'm gonna just look in here it's about that long again if you had known the exact dimensions and could have done that here. So I'm going to turn the image off. <coughs> and there's my uh, world top. That is my Gary chair, the Wiggle chair. Now there are other chairs, you know, for example, this Hal ply. Um, that will use a combination. It's basically an extrude. Um, we'll look at this. So some of this I'm going to just start modeling um, by eye at this point. I'm not going to picture frame anymore, but you understand how that can be done. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, something like this is very simply, in a sense, an extrude it has a little variation for curvature, which we'll get into, but it's an extrude with some legs. Um, so let me go back to products chairs. So something like that as as a approximation, um, you know, we can go here and <clears throat> you know I'll basically draw its you know the curvature of that, which is maybe something there, of course I can hit F10 and stretch some things till they're about a little bit closer to the approximation um, but a chair like that is essentially an extrude you know, with <coughs> some additional legs, so something there in this case I am operating in, in uh, the side view, so I'm going to take that leg and mirror it about there and draw a line to close that and join this hit F10 pull this leg down a little bit and in front view you notice in some of these the you know the legs are in a little bit so again all of this is, is kind of fuzzy modeling but often you can get it to where you need it and then <clears throat> you know edit from there. Something like this, obviously I made it a little too squat or, or narrow, so I could take this, I'll delete that curve, I could <clears throat> move an edge, so I select using the move edge command, select that edge, click it and click it that way. I could either position this into place or simply delete that one and mirror about the middle, so that way I know it's in the center. Um, maybe create a rectangle for there. Um, if I wanted to <coughs> sort of uh, fillet the edges, fillet the corners of this curve, so I'll select that. I could select both, or I can do one and mirror it again. Um, select that. What's the radius? Uh, we'll start with one and see. There you go. So you have those, and then I could use the pipe command and say, I don't know, 0.25. We have that. That even looks a little thick, but I'll 
mirror that. And again, <clears throat> offset surface. I'm not doing this to, you know, I, if I wanted to be very precise, I could bring in the picture frame and copy some of these. I'll use the offset surface here. Uh, you can see the direction of it. I'll just click flip or F to flip that. And the distance, solid, yes. Distance, I'll make it a half inch thick. There's that. So a simple approximation of that chair. Now, if we wanted <coughs> some curvature, or for example, let's look at a more organically shaped chair, something like this, the Panton chair. Um, let's see what this guy looks like. We're, we're going to start utilizing different um, sort of curve techniques and, and surface techniques. So something like this seems pretty straightforward in terms of uh, curves along the side that define um, an outline and then it, it sort of we can let the computer do the rest of that. So um, I will basically have to eyeball this one a little bit. My picture frame, my graphics card on this computer is not particularly working. Um, the only one I did on a remote machine. So uh, I'm going to essentially eyeball this. So let's create a curve. To uh, side view here, front view. Move this window over here, so I can at least see the image again. This is probably a good time to use a uh, picture frame, but I am um, working with a inferior machine right now. So I'm going to go here, uh, use interpolate curves, and I'm going to essentially pick. profile and it looks like it goes sort of up like this we go and back a little something like that now that is a very bad approximation so I'll hit F10 and just start editing it a little bit so it looks like you know maybe this and we've got here and, you know I think you can probably do a again picture frame is probably a good a good way to go here so this is my approximation for now. I'll drag that down a little bit. Again, if these snaps are kind of the object snaps are getting in your way, you can <clears throat> turn off O snap just for a little bit. Let me get that going there. And let's we'll see how that looks. It's close enough for now. So this curve is floating in space and just for uh Consistency's sake, I will rotate this, turn object snaps back on, and I'll just rotate it. So we have that, <clears throat> and you know it looks this chair it curves a little bit, so I'm going to move this in space a little too. So I'm going to go here, and drag that a little there. So it's it's kind of a little bit of sculpting involved there, kind of. I'm going to take this, mirror it, and I am going to create curves now for the back, for the for the top, and for the bottom. So I'll go here and basically hit Control up, and there's several ways to do this. I could I could mirror. Um, you know, one profile, take half of it. This could have been one curve and mirrored. I'm just kind of moving quickly. So, you know, this one obviously is pulled back pretty far. I'm going to move this down so it's holding control again. 
Okay. So there's that, and this is basically the sort of the outline of this. Again, I wasn't very precise in terms of where this moves. I could hit tab and go to sort of centers, um, but there's the outline curves. And what I want to do here is I've got four curves. <coughs> Sorry. I'm going to do a network surface and see what happens. So it's going to figure out something. And it's actually maybe not bad around the sides here, but <coughs> um, we can see that at the sort of backs of the knees, it's closed up there. So again, the network surface, if I were to put a straight line across as a guide curve and take this, we'll now see that it's a much closer approximation now with what we have. The problem here is in the back. So you have to start to understand <coughs> what effects the curves will have on that network. So if I take that and pull that back and do the same thing, I'm basically giving it more information. There you have that, which is a much closer approximation to the chair.